everyone uh cdu here gonna be doing ratchet to scp 001 when day breaks and let's get into it welcome back to scp exposed today we bring you scp 001 an xk class end of the world scenario it is uncertain that means a human human uh, extinction event. whether the details of this possible future event are true or false however that is up to the viewer to decide SCP-001's current classification is a polyon, meaning there is no hope of containment. SCP-001 is the designation given to the Sun after an event at unknown date resulted in 6.8 billion casualties within the first 24 hours. The SCP-001 effect does not seem to result from exposure to ultraviolet rays, but rather light in the visual spectrum. The effect is similarly present in moonlight, Upon contact with visible light produced by the sun, living organisms liquefy upon contact with visible light produced by the sun. Living organisms liquefy at the point of contact, with the effect spreading until the entire organism is converted. Visually, this is reminiscent of melting wax. The time this takes is largely dependent on the level of exposure and size of the organism. Despite this restructuring, at no point do living organisms perish. Upon completion, these organisms, SCP-001-A, take on a gelatinous consistency. Plants typically remain physically unstable, yet are still capable of photosynthesis and still produce oxygen. Yeah. Organisms capable of flight lose the capability to do so, and the bird population has reduced significantly due to death by impact. Yeah. Other animals also react in the same way as humans when subjected to light. Humans, once morphed into SCP-001-A, retain their sentience, memories, and mobility, but are not the same as they once were. Due to their composition, instances of SCP-001-A that make contact with one another may combine and blend at the molecular level. This does not seem to cause any pain or distress to the instances, though the resulting bulk can inhibit movement. Since the SCP-001 event, most instances have congregated into such collectives, which seem to possess no maximum volume. They move by dragging themselves across the ground or by separating themselves into smaller, faster organisms. Due to its nature, SCP-001 cannot be contained. Personnel are encouraged to attempt to reach Site-19, the biggest secure facility of the Foundation, by any means at their disposal. Personnel with knowledge as to the whereabouts of the O5 Council are to relay this information to the administrator. Survivors attempting to travel outdoors must fully cover their bodies in protective clothing, preferably several layers. Travel by foot should be limited as much as possible. Cities and man-made structures in general provide the greatest protection. Travel by air is preferable above all other methods. Personnel exposed to SCP-001 are to be considered lost compromised personnel are to be abandoned. Euthanization is not to be attempted. Collective instances of SCP-001-A that are of formidable size are to be avoided at all costs. Instances that have been subjected to freezing temperatures have proven immobile. Heat and electricity work as well, though they are less effective. Testing has revealed that SCP-001-A is relatively safe to consume. This is only to be considered as a last resort in the absence of other options as SCP-001-A may reconstitute within the digestive system, only small portions should be consumed at a time to prevent blockage. Currently... So you can't eat it. This is weird. Personnel stationed at Site-19 are pursuing the possibility of off-world colonization. Shuttles must be constructed to not allow light to penetrate the interior. This research, however, is still at the early stages of development. The administrator has sent out the following message to anyone still left alive out there. To those of you with families or, God forbid, children, I'm deeply, deeply sorry. You must push on. Do not let their deaths be in vain. We do still have time. Humanity may still have a future. Come to Site-19. We need all the hands we can get. Learn to embrace the darkness, friends. Fear the light. The administrator. As of present, no one understands why or how SCP-001 occurred. It could be a sort of nuclear reaction, or a predisposed event, or some anomalous action. But whatever the case, it has resulted in the termination of 95% of all life on Earth. There is no hope to remain on this planet. 
off-world habitation is the only option. Dr. Igata and her partner, Ari, were stranded at Site 46, along with other members of their crew. Dr. Igata left several recordings detailing their stay in the form of video logs. The following is her first log. They've just been sitting out there this entire time, calling out to us, begging for us to come outside. The noise drew in more of them. There's this one mass that I'm sure must have a few dozen people and God knows how many animals rolling around inside it. Screams and bleats and screeches and howls nonstop. Louder than all hell. They're not going to leave so long as they know we're down here. We managed to talk one of the D-Class members into going out, see if he couldn't draw them away. He was surprisingly okay with the plan. All he asked for was a gun. I think he was ready to die, though. He just stepped out and didn't even put up a fight. Pretty soon, he became one of them. The director has a plan. There's an escape tunnel hidden in his office. A tram under the site will take us to a safe house. We should be able to start towards Site 19 from there. For several weeks, there were no more logs. But then, one more was made, showing Dr. Igata in clear distress with blood stains on her chest. She had something in her hand, then held it up for the camera to see. It was a dismembered finger with a single wedding ring on it. They took him. Ari, he's gone. I, I, we, the t -t tunnel, flowed in through the, through the ceiling, dragging, dragging them into the, the light and ripping off their, their clothes and, and, and... Suddenly, Dr. Igata stopped talking as a voice spoke out through her walkie-talkie. Katie? The voice said. Dr. Igata froze, then whispered, Ari, is that you? Where are you? Why can't I get back inside? Are you there? Dr. Igata began to cry as she realized this wasn't Ari at all, but a mere remnant of him. Babe, it's all right. I'm all right. Really. It's a bright, sunny day, and we're just wasting away down there. Dr. Igata sobbed and turned off the walkie-talkie. Ari's wet, slimy voice cut off. For many days, there was still no update to Dr. Igata's log, but then... Finally, Igata made one last recording, which continued as follows. On the recording, Igata could be seen seated in her bunker. The metal door visible in the background was jolting and shaking like crazy. Voices emerged from behind the door, and one could be distinguished as Ari's. I know it's not him, said Dr. Igata in a panic. It's not him. It sounds like him, but it's not. They're just trying to get me out, but I won't fall for their tricks. I, I won't even if I want to be with him so badly. Suddenly, a loud crash ensued, and the door of the bunker collapsed. The blob of organisms appeared in its doorway, and they lunged at Dr. Igata. The camera recording ended instantaneously with the last frame image of Dr. Igata leaning back with the blob in front of her. When zoomed in, a hand missing a single finger, the ring finger, could be discerned. After this incident, it was presumed Dr. Igata was deceased or turned. This seemed to be confirmed once an update was made to Dr. Igata's logs. This was not a video recording, but instead a written poem. Foundation personnel theorized this was an entry made by Dr. Igata's turned body. Saffron skies raise the blazing sun. A chance encounter. Awkward displays. One day, my love, we be as one. Now you lie here, the life in you gone. In the dark outside of her rays, crimson skies bear the torch, our sun. Today, my love, will be as one. This was the end of the journal owned by the Oracle. No more information was disclosed. It is uncertain whether the presumed survivors of the future managed to develop a plan of escape. Foundation personnel have no idea how this information was passed back into the past, and if it even was for that matter. This whole case could be made up by the Oracle, or it could be 100% true and the fate of humanity could be doomed. O5 personnel recommend the Foundation prepare anyway, should a case of SCP-001 occur. What did you guys think of that SCP case? Do you have any theories on what SCP-001's origin is? Comment them below. See this, uh, this is actually something that was actually pretty quiet. I, I don't know what to say about, about this SCP. He's just going to wipe them all out. So, it looks like this SCP... Melts your whole body and it's just turning you into a zombie, but you got, but you just got all your uh, all your memories and stuff. But you, it's, but it's still not you. But I think it, the thing is, is that when it finds you, it's trying to drag you outside. 
or try to take your clothes off and drag you outside. Well, no, you don't need to take your clothes off because someone don't got their clothes on anyway. And they just have to drag you outside so you can turn turn into uh one of those creature one of those creatures. But I don't know. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the channel. This one was actually pretty actually a good SCP at this, but a SCP like this, a sun SCP that can actually wipe out humanity like like that, but melts them all away. But I'll see you guys later.